Okay, so this is a, a simple video, actually a, a simple example with a video uh, showing uh, this PCAM 5C right here, this camera. I have it in a 3D printed little case that belongs to something else. Um, but it's the little camera that's inside here. Uh, I changed the lens out to a wide angle lens versus the other one that they had, so it looks a little different. But this is the Digilent uh, PCAM 5C that they have for their Envision stuff or Revision. Um, and uh, and then we have the Zybo, uh, Zybo Z710 right here. So um, there's an example out there that's at Digilent. It's the Zybo Z720 PCAM 5C demo. And uh, there has been some in, in, information out there on their forums to show uh, examples of how to take that and put it on this one. So there's some changes you have to make with it. Um, and uh, so I found some instructions with it, but the problem I ran into, it seems like a lot of other people run into, is that it didn't work as described. Um, I tried, they have, um, they have a couple of releases of this. I tried this 2018.2 with 2018.3, that didn't work, and they're really, they're no help whatsoever when it comes to that type of stuff. It's like, we released it for 28.2, use that. If you don't, well, tough. Um, so I end up using the 2017.4. So I have 20, 2017.4 on a VM. I'm just gonna use that. Um, they have a few things that download. All you need to do is download the zip file that's listed here. You don't have to worry about the other stuff. Um, some of the instructions that they have uh, the instructions on the front page where you start off most of the stuff is for the newer one for like 18 so this stuff pretty much doesn't really apply with the 17 outside of when I got to the SDK I did follow this versus what I found on the web where they're on the forums where they're talking about how to convert this over to, to a 10 um, so that's what I've done I've gone through this had a lot of headaches a lot of problems and uh, finally got it to build right end up there was some a description for the processor for the for the zinc processor as well as for um, the Vivado version in a XCI file um, that wasn't right and it wouldn't go away it wouldn't update so I had to go manually update it I had to go find it manually update it and it finally worked um, so I'm happy with that and so that's what I have, what you see over here. I also have a HDMI um, display over here. This is a little mini HDMI display that's coming off the Zybo here. And then I have the camera that's sitting over here. Um, and then this other window that's running on the VM. So this is Bovado 2017. I uh, went through all this. I did the, the synthesis and the implementation. Finally got everything to work right and then uh, did the whole export into SDK um, as they describe um, in here kind of in this area right here so I, I followed the, these instructions for doing that and you create a new basically a new application rather than just doing the plain export um, so that's what I should have up over here so here's the SDK uh, with the project I don't know why this thing keeps resizing on me. Uh, right. It shouldn't be that wide. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Very frustrating. Trying to fit it in this window, try to get everything on one screen. Um, so this is the SDK. Um, this is 2017-4 as well. And so I created the, the project, um, imported all the stuff that they needed so I can get the board support package built. So everything is set up. It all seems to be working right. Um, and so there's there's a couple of pieces to this when you actually get to this point and you're gonna load it. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna kinda go through here. I'm not gonna go through as far as creating all the stuff. And there's all this information. I'll post some stuff with it as well uh, for the road test, but 
uh, just as far as getting this on the board. So there's a few steps. Um, and so I'll just turn on the board. Um, I should have another screen up here. Well, since I'm using a VM, I gotta go grab um, the board's plugged into my PC that's running the VM. So I had to go here and grab the Digilent um, uh, programming programmer. And then I'll bring up a, a mini comp session to it. Uh oh. Did I not close it out? Or did it not come in? Hello. I should have one. I'm not seeing it. Let's do this again. Shut it off. Set it back on. Go get it. There it is. Hello. Okay. Yes, it's working. Um, okay, so that's up and running. And then I'll get rid of this. I'll go back to the SDK. And uh, so, yeah, I've actually, let me see if I think I still have it up over here. Yeah, you see, like this XCI file, this is for this MIPI. There's another one that's for a clock, uh, the DVI clock. And that was what was giving me a headache. And down here, uh, I could see that it wasn't, uh, it was listening, to, it was the only one that was listening to the other processor. They're still listening to 20 versus the 10 after you go through this whole process with settings. Um, that's what you have to do in the project. You have to change settings and change, change a pro the project device to a 10 instead of a 20. And then you have to go this whole process of getting everything updated and then processing it and then doing the synth synthesis and the implementation and then getting generating a, a bit file that you can finally go and create this SDK uh, project. So let me get rid of this dude and then bring this dude up. I've got this guy over here somewhere. Desktop manager. Um, and so the board's on, I'm connected. Uh, the first thing you need to do is you come up here uh, to Xilinx and then program the FPGA. So we have to program it first Everything set should be all of the default. So we get to this the bit file that was created, and it should go and do its thing. And there you go. They have these different windows over here. So we see it went and did some stuff. Set the board up. Load the bit file. Get the FPGA set up. There's our Zybus C7. Um, that's our project still has a 20, that's fine. That's just the project name. And so that's up and running. So we program the FPGA, so we're good there. So we come over here under Project Explorer, click on this uh, PCAM BDMA HDMI, right click, and then we'll come down here, run as, and then launch on hardware uh, system debug. Yeah, sure, because I've done this already. And then we go okie dokie. So this will load the board support package on and boot it up and get it to do things. That's all fun and happy. Maybe I can expand this. See a little bit more that's happening over here. I wonder if I could stack them. I don't want to move them around. But we see it's doing it. It's at 99%. It'll sit there for a little while. Then we'll see this come up. We'll kind of bring over here. The other thing we'll see over here, we'll see a menu pop up on our Minicom session. Once everything is happy, I don't want to resize it. That's not going to be good. Um, and then you see this other window will change. Once it's up and running, and then the camera which should come up, and then the screen should change as well. Uh, it should happen eventually, right? Don't think I messed anything up. There it goes. Booted. Oh, there's our image on the screen. All right. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's funny because the, the resolution kind of comes out weird like that. Um, let's see. 
I think you can see that on the little screen. All right, you see things are happening. Okie dokie. So we got something up and running. If we come over to the Minicom session, we can see now we have a menu. And with this, we can change. We go to A, change resolution. Now we got a bigger screen. There we go. Now it looks a little bit better, I think. I don't know how well it comes up in the camera. All right. So you can see the, the boards and stuff. And I do have a wide angle lens, so it is a little bit different. And I got that big cable in the way. So and then you can see the screen stuff. Uh, Okie dokie. I should get a stand for it. That'd be better for our both of these. That would be better. Um, so they have a few things you can you can play with inside here. This complete crystal lens focus B. Uh, I don't know. If we go all the way to FF. I don't know what it does. I should, don't really see much of a difference. So we can try another value. We'll try a. Yeah. Not really. Maybe I'm not doing it right. Let's try single. It doesn't like single. Okay. Um, let's do the next one. Image format. RGB. I think this one comes out weird. Yeah. It's all yellowy, kind of weird looking. Yep, yep. So let's go back to D. Let's try the other one. It kind of sets it back normal. Yeah, looks normal. All right. Again, you don't really see too well. So uh, let's see what else we got. I don't want to write any registers because I don't know what to write. Um, we could change the gamma. Does that do anything? A little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, let's see, another one, try number five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess it's useful for something. And then we got H. I'm gonna enable enhance something. Try H again. We'll do a st uh, simple AWB. H and then disable. No, so. Yeah, it kind of got yellowy, so I wonder if that kind of cleaned things up. Let's try it again. If we went to enhance, eh, I don't know. It seems brighter or something. Looks a little bit different. Almost looks a little cleaner. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, this piece here can be a prelude into other things. I think other people have taken it and created other stuff around it. Um, there's a Zybo autonomous car example that's out there on Digilent. That's kind of where I was trying to go with this. Um, Time-wise, I'm kind of running out of time. I got kind of have the car halfway built. I got a lot of parts. I even got the, the they had 3D the the files for 3D printing pieces. So this is supposed to be the camera holder. Uh, for that camera so this is going to sit on top of the car and then they have some steering mechanisms and stuff like that and, which is kind of cool and but the problem is the image that they have they ran it with a 20 instead of a 10 and they have a lot of stuff going on different p mods and other connections they're using the p mod connections on the on the zybo um and they're using the one that's not on this one so i'd have to go back and modify it and see if i can do that um, but other than that we'll see what happens see if i can put together something and have it up and running um, but I just wanted to get something to show that I got the camera working finally um, this was a lot of work a lot of headaches uh, a lot of starts and stops and uh, so I'm kind of happy it finally works so uh, that's pretty much it that's the PCAM demo on a Zybo Z710